I said this is Gura month and our friends at the Guam Housing and Urban Renewal Authority are celebrating a momentous occasion, 60 years, big, big anniversary. And joining me right now on the KUM couch here, the Blue Suede is hosting uh, two wonderful people, a uh, good friend of ours, Fernando Estevez, who is the deputy director, and Gina Gura, the property site manager. Fernando, I must say, well, happy holidays to the both of you, first of all. And, you know, you've, you've been now deputy director for a short term yes. at the agency. They picked the right man for the right job. I appreciate that. Yeah. That, uh, that means a lot. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, so, and, and of course, I've, I've known you long enough and I've had the pleasure of interviewing you long enough. You don't exactly dilly-dally when you take a new role in, in Guam's public sector and everything like that. You hit the ground running. Certainly, there is a lot to do. Um, Gina knows this probably better than anybody at Gura and everything. But the commitment to serve the community and to provide quality housing, not just, you know, a lot of people, maybe the misconception, you know, it's low-cost housing. I mean, there are a lot of people that qualify for it, but you are taking care of our people. So... Kudos to the both of you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. It, it definitely is an honor to be serving in this capacity. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny you mentioned that, right? You know, as I come in and I think I, I went and I, as, I, as I met all the staff, I think one of the first, Gina can attest to this, one of the first things I said is, you know, I just want you to know ahead of time, I don't, I don't come in and get my feet wet. I jump right into the deep end. So just be prepared. Well, coming off of the last three years, you know, you did that whole like quarantine, you know, facility thing yeah. and everything. So, I mean, it, it does kind of parallel, you know, some of the the roles and responsibilities that you now shoulder and everything because it's it's about providing, you know, uh, adequate facilities for people in need. Yeah, and I think overall, I mean, one of the big things that we're looking at and, and I hope to uh, provide to Gura, right, is taking kind of the problems as, as we saw with COVID and and looking at the big picture, right, and how we can resolve those issues. And so I'm very excited to be at Gura in a place where um, able to effectuate some of that change. All right. right? And part of part of our program and we're going to be discussing is, is, is public housing. And so, as, as mentioned, uh, this is Gura's 60th anniversary, 60 years serving the community, one project at a time, building communities one project at a time. And uh, although we have many programs, the three that are people are most familiar with, Section 8, our public housing units and then our community development, um, our block grants, right? So mm -hmm. some of the community facilities that we build. So this week in particular, very excited. We're going to be talking about our, our public housing. And so I brought with me one of my four public uh, property site managers uh, to discuss, you know, what public housing does, what their mission is. You just provide information. She's been with the uh, girl for, for, for quite a bit, a lot of experience working um, in the agency and most importantly, working with our constituents. Outstanding. So let's yeah. go ahead and, well, Gina, before, before you break down the nuances of the program, what's it been like with the, with the new guy on staff now? <laughs> it's been great. Um, he brings a lot of guidance to uh, Gura and we're happy to have him on board. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I know, and, and again, you know, like uh, our condolences to you and your team for uh, the former uh, director of the agency, the late Ray Tapasnia, was he was always stressing the fact that, you know, housing it obviously, you know, by definition, and, you know, most people know Gura for that reason, but there's so much development like you were talking about, you know, like it's uh, public facilities, you know, in addition to housing, you know, things that, um, uh, you know, the public can take advantage of, ways to improve, you know, the community for, uh, for the benefit of, of you know visitors locals and everything like that and i think that's that's one thing that a lot of people um, don't really realize that gura does correct so this week we're focusing on highlighting um public housing which is where i work fernando mentioned that i am one of the four property site managers i oversee the amp2 division up in jotnia and um along with three other property site managers which is philly and nicholas uh, Narcisa Ada mm -hmm. and Patrick Bamba and there's a there's 750 public housings all throughout the island we are the shadow of the section 8 program mm -hmm. as you know last week I believe uh, one of the supervisors was uh, featured in one of the other radio talk shows mm -hmm. and they spoke about their program they they recently closed section 8 uh, doesn't have to try as hard as public housing when it comes to marketing. Uh, a lot of a lot of the uh, public, when they apply, they're really looking towards applying for Section 8. Mm -hmm. But when they find out that the waiting list is long, they they look at our program as as a backup program. So can we differentiate the two? I mean, and what sure. what are some things? Because like a lot of people think like you know there is that program. Like if if I fall under a particular uh, income level of that in my family and everything, uh, mm -hmm. then I immediately would qualify for Section 8 or I, I would apply to Section 8. But what, what are the differences between the two? 
Well, one of the biggest differences is the income guideline. We at Public Housing use what we call 80% of the area median income guideline mm -hmm. to determine whether a family is eligible for the program based on their household composition size. Section 8 also does the same thing. We are geared towards assisting families that are of the low income bracket, while Section 8 is geared towards assisting those of the very low income uh, limit. Mm -hmm. Now, another, a few years ago, I would have said that another main difference between the two programs is that Section 8 is a housing choice voucher program where the voucher and the assistance is tied with the resident and public housing would be the project based uh, where, where the assistance is tied with the unit. But recently, Section 8 also has project-based programs. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I don't have off the top of my head the name of those programs, but I am aware that they do have such project-based programs. So with Section 8, if a family is receiving assistance through a voucher, they can take that voucher and rent in the private market with different landlords. They can also port that voucher to another housing authority whether it is being um, managed and operated by a government organization or a nonprofit organization. And that's because Section 8 and public housing is a national program. Mm -hmm. And we do calculate the rents the same exact way that they would do it in California or North Carolina. Um, so basically, that's the gist of uh, the standard of oh, the program. You. Yeah, thank you. And and, and Fernando, um, I know like for people my age, right? Like I'm I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm approaching fifty. Good lord. Um, but I remember, you know, I've got families that I've known and friends that I went to school with. You know, they're, they're, and they said, oh yeah, I'm from you know I'm from Gura five hundred one. I'm from five hundred three. I'm from five hundred eight. And everything. This goes, you know, kind of like to the legacy of the agency. It goes back so far of. Uh, of you know accommod not just accommodations and and certainly nothing temporal and everything like that but these yeah. are homes that people can like raise their families in and you know and and thrive in them and this goes back way long no that's exactly right i mean you know sometimes people just need an opportunity and we've seen a lot mm -hmm. so many success stories coming out of our different gur um, units over the years and what it is it's, it's housing security right whether it's for a period of time that's needed or a longer period of time and that provides the best opportunity for children most of all you know, she meant, I know Gina mentioned 750 units in our inventory, but really what that equates to is nearly 5,000 of our people that we're housing, mm. right? And then when you add in Section 8, that's, that's over 10,000. So Gura alone houses over 15,000 of our people. That's pretty significant, right? And, and we're constantly looking for ways to expand um, other affordable housing rentals that we're, we're building into, into our programs outside of Section 8 and outside of public health. So we're looking at creative ways to kind of expand and provide that need. But going back to your point, um, you know, a home is a home, right? Yes. So we provide a house, but we also provide a home for however long that's needed. And, um, and that's important for anybody to build, build a future and be able to build a future in, in, here on Guam. And that's mm -hmm. important, right? We want our people to have means to be able to stay, you know, build up their lives, and you know, ultimately continue to contribute to the community, right, in whatever capacity that is. So um, definitely, I think, um, is, is, is it's valuable. It's valuable what, what we do. Mm -hmm. Now, Gina, for someone very, uh, very experienced and very tenured at the agency like you, is there a mission statement that kind of like galvanizes, you know, um, uh, the employees and the workforce of Gura to really try and like, you know, guide, guide what they do? And then also, what's going on for Gura Month? Okay. Um, Two-part question. <laughs> two part. So for the first part, Gura's mission is to provide decent, safe, and sanitary housing uh, to low and very low income families. Um, that's, our, that's our mission, and that's basically what we look forward to doing every day. All the staff and management, when we come to work, that is what drives us. So, you know, for, for like public housing where we are the landlord, that's mm -hmm. another difference between public housing and Section 8. Gura is the landlord for the public housing, the 750 units. That's interesting how I never thought about it like that. I mean, it makes yeah. perfect sense. I just mm -hmm. never, you know, kind of like kind of yeah. phrased it like that. So, so one of our main responsibilities is to ensure that the housing that we provide to these families in the community are, are upkept 
and maintained in a manner that is, it, you know, it, it's parallel with our mission. Mm -hmm. So that, that's to answer that, that part of the mm -hmm. question. Now, because your question was like that long, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what so was the second half so of your yeah, question? Maybe for the both of you, like, what, what sure. do you guys have planned for uh, for Guru Month, and not only that uh, that we, the community, can learn more about the services you provide, but also how are you guys like you know celebrating sixty years? Yeah, absolutely. So we actually were working with the, one of the MPA classes. That was a long question, by the way. <laughs> 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 they put together an animated web series which captures a lot of Guru, you know, back into our history and some of our big programs, and that could be found on our on our YouTube channel. So they, you know, they. They put that all together, scripted it, animated it. Nice. And that's coming out there, releasing different portions as we go through the month. Um, I hope it features like those cute little like carabals that they Yeah, it like, does. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I love well, those. Well, no, no caricatures, but they're they're animated. Yeah. Okay, very cool. Yeah. So uh, along with that, you know, we had we had a wave to celebrate, right? It just, you know, kind of show, come out for the community. It was it was good morale booster. Um, and I know the MPA class is also putting together kind of a book, a pamphlet. So, you know, we've had employees and we're going to be honoring and recognizing our employees who have been with Gura for a long time. Mm -hmm. I think the one we have has been with us the longest, I think, is at over 40 years wow. right now with Gura. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we'll, def we'll be at our employee recognition and appreciation luncheon slash Christmas, uh, Christmas luncheon that we have planned on a weekend. Okay. No, for, for all not, not on government time. Yeah. All right. Um, we'll be, uh, you know, recognizing them, those with 30 years ex of experience, 20 years, and then just really kind of showing um, that even those that are 10 years. So we'll be recognizing them, having a little fun with um, a little fashion show there, courtesy uh, with, with our employees as the models, courtesy of uh, Norm Analista and company. Oh, nice. Yeah. So those very, some good very threads excited. you guys are going to be showing off. Yeah, absolutely. I think I'm rocking two outfits. Okay, I've, yeah. I've got one of his hoodies and everything. It is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> That's great. Very talented. I think I got a couple of his pieces as well. Very cool. Okay, yeah. so we got about a minute left, and I want to sure. give you guys, like, you know, like, a, like appropriate time to kind of tell the community, maybe we'll start with you, Gina, like, what is it meant to you to, to serve the island and, and to contribute to, you know, the positive nature of our, of our community to work at Gura? Well, um, in total, I've been with the government of Guam almost 30 years. Mm. And more than half of that, I've been with Gura. Gura is a very rewarding place to work. It's one of those government agencies that you feel that when you, when you leave home, uh, for you know, for home for the day, you can say that you really earned your your money's worth. Um, we do assist a lot of individuals and families that are are facing um, homelessness, eviction. So it's very rewarding to know that at the end of the day, you know, you're, you're assisting somebody and, and making their life more positive. And that's beautiful. You know, giving, giving them some stability. Well, thank you. And like your deputy just said, you know, I mean, it's, it's about giving people a place where they can not just rest their head at the end of the day, but really, you know, Give, like them, give them a home. chance. Yeah. And so, yeah. Fernando, final words with you because, you know, you've been now been at the agency less than a fiscal quarter, but certainly coming into the, this role, you knew what the agency was all about and you knew the sense of history. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's definitely an honor to be here. Um, the, the employees are great. They're all very passionate about their work. I definitely do experience, uh, um, appreciate the experience that a lot of them bring, right? And so I look forward to a lot of the the upcoming things that we're going to be doing, the things that we're working on even broader, right? And, and working ex even externally from GER, right? To address the housing issues. Because one of the things, and I've said this on a, on a couple of different forums, that GER does focus on the low to, to very low income for housing. Mm -hmm. But if we don't look at the big picture and don't address um, housing for moderate income individuals, they will all end up on our, on our doorstep and our resources mm -hmm. won't get everyone, mm -hmm. right? So we need to take a proactive approach and a preventative approach and kind of look at the, the entire housing problem instead of a narrow focus only on affordable housing. Because if they're you know, requiring subsidized housing, they're really kind of on their last leg, right? And I, and I prefer people to have the best opportunity available to them. And so we wanna look at that. And I know the governor is very, very um, focused. Governor and Lieutenant Governor are very focused mm -hmm. on kind of addressing the housing challenges and, and a very, um, excited and happy for their confidence and to give me the opportunity to help resolve that for 
for our people. All right. Well, very well said, uh, Mr. Deputy Director. So Fernando Estevez and Gina Cura from the Guam Housing and Urban Renewal Authority, Biba Gura. Biba. Biba. Congratulations to the both of you and happy Guru Month. Thank you. 60 years. All right. Please stay tuned. We're back. Up.